Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my channel and today in this video, we are going to do a little more deep dive into how we can play around with the listing of our records of the resource, in our case the customer and what are some of the common ways that we can optimize the listing. For example, if you see, I have uh, basic pagination and then I introduce two di different tabs. One is all customers which will basically give me about what 30 35 ish uh, records and when i click on my customers it is basically a list of 10 customers which uh, who have my ownership okay i mean i created it so that's where another you know, the differentiation is i also um <clears throat> changed the query a bit because when you do a default listing of your records what happens is any new customer that you will create or any new record for that matter that you create, right? It goes as the last item on the page. So I'll give you an example. So this is what I have filled, right? And if I hit the create button, now it takes me to the edit screen, which is fine. If I go back to my customer's listing page, you will see right now it is coming on top, but that is not the case by default. So let me show you. This is my list customer page. If you see, there is one new method that I've added, which is get table query. So the get table query is giving me a builder instance. Okay. And that builder instance, when it is returned, what I can do is I can add my query condition. So what I have done over here is I have ordered by the ID in descending format. So if I remove this, thing altogether let's just assume it was not there which will happen when you create a new resource by the way right so if you see right now my record is at the last page and again this is not the right thing so i introduced this new thing and some changes done and we have our listing with the with recent data coming as the first item Okay, what next? Now, obviously I have these two tabs. So the question is, how am I getting these two tabs? Well, again, this is something which I have configured in my list customers page or the file which we have because it is inside the filament resources, customer resource pages folder. Okay, so that's how we are doing it. I've introduced this new method over here called get tabs and this is responsible for showing these tabs if i add one more like hit refresh i get one more tab but obviously this is not something which i want so i'll just get rid of it but yeah we have two tabs one is simplify fqn yeah, so one is where we are showing all the records, so that's fine. And then I have the me tab. What have I done over here? Let's see. So obviously we have labels, which basically defines what is being shown as the tab name. And then we have a method that we can chain to the tab, which is modify query using. So now the modify query using gives us the builder the query builder and like i added my condition or rather the sorting order in my get table query similarly i have added a where condition to my to this particular query uh, instance and i'm saying that only give me the records where the user id is the current logged in user okay so that's the only change that i have made so far and that kind of you know, changes the list because um, if you see here, we have four pages. When I click on my customer, I see only two pages. So that's the basic difference, right? And um, yeah, I also saw that there is an option of adding a badge, which basically is this small 11 counter, right? Which says how many customers are, uh, no, the count of the customers that I've created, which it's kind of handy, I would say, but yeah, do note that it does add one more query because 
inside the badge, right, I have this count. So it is resulting in a new query. And obviously one last thing that I would like to touch upon in this video is this thing of, let's say if I go to dashboard, right, and then if I hit customers, it is by default going to this tab. And how this is happening? Because if I remove this last function and if I refresh, can you see it is defaulting to the all customer thing. Now there are two ways to handle this. One obviously is that if I kind of take this out and paste it as a second item, I could see that it brings the my customer as the first item and the all customer as the second item. And obviously this is something I can do, but if we want one more way of doing it, let me undo. I had, what I had done is basically, there is one more method available in this class, which we can override, which is get default active tab. Now, because this is a method, I can also do certain things like I can add conditions that if the user role is admin, then show the all tab by default, because I would expect that the admin is not going to add customers and stuff like that. But if the role holder is something else, maybe, you know, you default it to his tab, you know, that, that kind of um, uh, conditional behavioral change can be done. And again, I always say this is where you know, I like the, uh, the beauty of this package because so many things are thought through, you know, it allows you to change the behavior of the core features of filament so easily. And it is so flexible that really, you know, doing development with filament is such a breeze, right? Um, this being a classic example. So yeah, as I said, you know, there are a lot of ways we can, um, play around with the sequence and the default tab, but I thought it is important that you know that we can do this uh, default tab thing with a function, which means you can have your business logic here as well. Well, yeah, that's about it guys. Uh, that's what I wanted to cover in this listing of resources. There are quite a few things, but I have generally covered most of the uh, important aspects and I would strongly suggest that you go through the documentation. So we, saw quite a few methods in here for example the get tags uh, get tabs with modifying the query stuff like that right so we have now i'm trying to cover most of the things and also try to show you how they are actually used in an actual project so that you get a real life sense of you know, what those functions can or what those features can translate into right yeah, that's about it. If you like this video, then do click on the thumbs up icon. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And yes, as I said, I still see that about 80%, not 80%, 90% of my sub of my viewers are not subscribers. So yeah, if you like this video, then do subscribe that button and help me get better with this particular stat because the more percentage of you know, viewers are actually subscribers means better for me. I can reach more such users and help them with this content. See you next time. Bye.